Greetings, mathematicians. Um, starting to stack these lessons up. Uh, I believe this will will hit on 11.4, and we are simplifying before multiplying. Mm, ing, ing, I like it. Simplify before multiply. And if you're keeping count, and I hope you are, we are on 26L, 26R. Don't be distracted by the next lesson. I'm mapping them out two at a time. All right, if you are ready, stick with me. Otherwise, you can pause. All right. Unit three, lesson five, simplify before multiplying. All right, and let's take a peek. Make sure I have the right pens. Andy, awesome. All right, let's go ahead and put in our date. Let's make sure we have our page numbers. 11.4, I believe we are. Twenty-six L and R, twenty-six L, twenty-six R. Excellent. Our objective. I will determine when I can simplify by analyzing the relationship between factors. That is a lot to chew on. Let's go through it slowly. I will determine when I can simplify by analyzing the relationship between factors. So our keywords in here would be determine. So that means figure out. when I can simplify. Um, simplify is going to bring us way back to unit one. Remember, uh, five tenths is the same as one half. So when we simplify, we're trying to get it to its smallest form, numerical form. I will determine when I can simplify by analyzing. And analyzing means we have to do some thinking. We're gonna do some deep thinking. Hmm. Analyzing the relationship between factors. So the relationship we're talking about is simply uh, numerical. What's our numerical relationship? All right, let's go back one more time. I will determine or figure out when I can simplify make a fraction smaller by analyzing, thinking about the relationship between factors. And I put an asterisk on this one. This works when you know your factors. Think of third and fourth grade, your fact families, uh, counting by fives, counting by tens, uh, knowing your eights, knowing your twelves. Having a strong grasp of your factors can really help make this move quickly. If you don't, there are ways around it. All right, so let's take a look. I have one sample problem here. I have two thirds times a whole number 15. Um, I've gone ahead and framed out a few things here. So this will be a four step solution. So let's look in our, our side note here. Uh, scan the butterfly. I know what you're thinking, Mr. McNeil. This is not science, this is math. There are no butterflies. Uh, simply, we're, we're talking about the cross relationship between a denominator and its opposing numerator, denominator and its adjacent numerator. So let's see, do you see factors? Yes or no? Simplify, multiply. These are our four steps. Let's take a look. Two and one, I don't see any factors. 3 and 15, I, I can ask myself this. Does 3 go into 15? Yes or no? How many times does 3 go into 15? So 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 15, how many times? How many 3s fit in 15? Now, if I needed to, I could, I could work this out. I could say my 3s. 3, 6, 9. 12, 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, five times. 
Now I, I can simply do this since three goes into itself. I can change that to one. Three goes into 15 five times. I can change that to five. My new problem will be, and I'm going to move it down here. Let's move it down. It would be two over one times five over one equals 10 over one or 10. Now we can double check this. Let's go the, the route we learned yesterday. Let's just go numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, two thirds times 15. Easy peasy whole number goes over one. Two times 15 is 30. Three times one is three. I've got an improper fraction. That means I need to divide down. So 30 divided by three equals 10, bingo. Both ways work. This method, we simplified at the end. This method, we're simplifying in the beginning. Both will work for you. It's really up to you which one are you more comfortable doing. Let's take a look. I've got some sample problems on the next page. Um, there will be occasions where you can simplify everything. So let's look at those numerical relationships on the butterfly. Can five go into 10? Yes, it can. Five goes into itself, becomes one. Five goes into 10 two times, becomes two. What about three and 12? Does three go into 12? Yes, yes it does. It goes into 12 four times. Three goes into itself one time. So now I can rewrite it as one over two times one over four. Now we go numerator times numerator, we get one. Two times four, we get eight. We have simplified ahead of time. Let's double check. Let's do it the old way. Three times 10 times five twelfths. Three times five, that's not so hard to figure out. 10 times 12. Now we're getting to be really big numbers. So anytime I multiply a number by 10, I just put a zero at the end, so it's 120. Now, this is a correct answer. It's not a simplified answer. Whereas if we simplify first, we will end up with a simplified answer. So now we need to figure out how many 15s go into 120. I have a feeling it's gonna be eight. <laughs> so if we, if we wanted to, we could add this up, we could figure it out, um, or we could, let's see. How many, one, how many 15s go into 120? 15 goes into 12. Oh no, this is one you actually have to know, right? So I know 10 would be 150. Let's take two away, that's 30 away. That's 120, yeah, so it's gonna be eight. So we could simplify it. 15 goes into itself one time. 15 goes into 128 times. So to get that simplified, one eighth, we'd have to do some extra math. For this, this sample, I would simplify ahead of time. So there are occasions you'll run into simplifying all the factors. Let's look at another one. Look at the look on the butterfly. Which pair works? Is two a factor of 21? It is not. Three would be. Two does not work, so we leave those alone. Let's look on the other side of the butterfly, four and 16. Four goes into itself, four goes into 16. So I can rewrite this two over four times one over 21. I've gotten a much smaller number than multiplying 16 by 21. So I can make my life a little bit easier. Two times one is two. Four times 21, four times 20 is 80. Four times one is four. So I end up with maybe four. Ooh, I'm not quite to this finish line because I noticed they are both even numbers. I can divide down by two easily. And if I really focus over here, two fourths, 
I know two fourths simplifies to a half. So I need to get it even smaller. One and 42. That's going to be my simplified answer. So I actually could have simplified this one down on its own. So sometimes you're going to see it all at once. Sometimes we're going to get one pair from the butterfly. Let's look to see what the answer would have been if we worked it out the long way. I'm going to stick with that. Let's look down here. Um, let's look on the butterfly. Is three a factor? There's 25 a factor of three. Or I'm sorry, a multiple of three. It's not. Three times 10 is 30. Three times nine is 27. Three times eight, 24. 25 is not going to work. Let's look on the other butterfly. Is four, is there a relationship between four and seven? There's not, there is no easy way out of this one. So we're just gonna simply rewrite and multiply. Seven times three, 25 times four. Easy peasy, 25 times four is 100. Seven times three is 21. There is no simplifying here. This is the answer. Now, the key, the key to, well, I think that's a key. Our key is, the key to simplifying is seeing numerical relationships. You can do it the long way and end up with the right answer. You can always end up with the right answer doing it the, the first method. Simplifying just cuts down from the start and makes it easy to get to that, that final answer. All right, my friends, you'll have some samples to do in Think Central. I'll see you there.